welcome to Beads Jar. My name's Billy, and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to work with the Montes crystals and the Super Duo beads to create this Coastal Shore bracelet. I hope you enjoy the project. For this fabulous bracelet project, we're going to be working with the Monte chatons in this beautiful light turquoise. We've got our pastel white super duo beads with the two holes. We've got a size 11 toho in the Mediterranean sea colour and for my fastener I'll be using a six millimeter appetite bead. I'll be working with the precision scissors and a size 12 beading needle, the eight pound clear fire line, and I've cut a meter and a half to start me off on my project. I'm gonna go through my appetite bead to start with. So I'm just gonna go straight through the bead with my beading needle, and I'm gonna take this towards the bottom of my thread leaving about a 10 centimetre tail and that will finish off our bracelet project when we need to. I'm going to go back up through the appetite bead and just loop that round to start me off. Next I'm going to pick up one of the Toho seed beads and one Super Duo. Next we're going to take another Super Duo which will sit across from the first one and I'm going to go up through those two. I'm going to take my thread that's come out of the first hole through the second hole in the Super Duo so that my needle's coming out in the opposite direction. so that the two beads will now sit side by side. Picking up three of the size 11 tohos onto the beading needle and I'm going to go back on myself so same way that I went in with the beading needle I'm going to go out again. first part of the pattern done there and I'm taking the beading needle back through the first hole and out to continue my thread in here. Just pulling in the tension on the project so you can see how it's going to start to sit together. So we're moving on and picking up a second super duo one Toho and the first of the Montes here as well. So I've let the first two beads go down the thread so they'll be sitting this way and we're going to move to the chaton. So we want to make sure we get the holes threaded correctly so I'm going to go through the first two on this side and show you how that'll sit next to the beads. And we're already starting to see the pattern building up here. Move on to our next Toho and we're going to pick up two small Super Duo beads as well. I'm going to drop them down. And just to make that easier, I'm going to flop the Super Duos to the side that I need them to be in. 
don't be getting too concerned if one of your monties keeps slipping round. When we put the second thread coming down, that'll sit correctly as well. So we're gonna go, we'll come out of the first hole, we're gonna go through the second hole in the Super Duo. So I'm just going through the Super Duo. Bring my cord through. Pick up three toe hose and go back through the same direction. So my thread's now coming out of this side of the super duo. I'm going to go back down the same super duo. So we're going back through the bottom hole again and out. And that's where we can pick up more of our beads to continue threading. So I'm just pulling in the tension there as well. So I'm picking up a super duo, a toho, and one of the chatons, Monty chatons. Now I've picked up the wrong side for the chaton, so I just need to re-thread it through the opposite side. So I can just go back through with my needle to take that off because it's going to be upside down if I continue this way. So we take that back off. And we want to make sure it's going to sit that side. So that will sit correctly now when I thread through the other side of the beads. Picking up a Toho and two Super Duos. We go through. Pick up three of our seed beads, back through the Super Duo. And then down through the same Super Duo and out of the bottom hole to thread our next lot on. Super Duo, Toho, and Monty. So you're going to carry on with that method of threading until you have a full length required for a bracelet. Bearing in mind we're going to add a fastener, so your fastener will be two centimetres in length. Um, so think about that when creating the bracelet length that you need. Um, so we'll get to that point and then if we will join you again and show you how to start threading on the opposite side. So we're doing just one side of the bracelet for now and then we'll move on to how to get both sides of this bracelet created. Okay, so I've continued with my threading method until I've got all the length required for my bracelet. I'm going to go through and do the 
one side for the clasp to finish off this bracelet and then we'll work down the other side and complete that through as well okay so I'm going to pick up five sorry now I'm going to pick up six of my seed beads so the size 11 tohos again so we're picking up six of those and I'm just going to let, take that down and we're going to be adding um, a loop here in order to go around our appetite bead so I've got my six that are going to form the joint here and I'm going to make my loop to go around the top one so if we add I think about 12 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 I'm going to try 12 extra beads and make sure that that's going to give me a good size loop for my appetite bead. I'm going to add one more just so it's not too tight and then count the first five and on the sixth bead I'm going to go back through with my beading needle. So I added my first lot, made my loop, double check that that's going to sit nicely and it'll pop through, which it will. And then I'm going to thread another five seed beads. Take my thread back through the first super duo and the hole that's not got any thread through it like so pick up a brand new seed bead so I'm going to go through the hole so that's going to complete my little diamond shape we're going to go through the top of that super duo pick up three so my threads come out of the, this side and we're going to loop back through and through the bottom of that same super duo so the hole at the bottom there so that's completing the diamond shape with the super duos and we're going to go through the super duo next to it so we're not picking up any new beads at this moment come out next to the super duo and we pick up one of our toho beads and now we want to make sure we go through the second holes in our Monty so we're going to go through the second holes along so I've got that through I'm just going to flip it around so you can see that there's the two running parallel and pull that up I'll move my fingers out of the way and you can now see how that's going to start to look as we move along with the project for ease and comfort now you've seen how that's working that way I'm going to flip the project onto its side so that I can thread um, easier 
So I'm now picking up a new Toho and I'm going to go through the Super Duo that's next in the row. So I've come out next to that one, pick up a brand new Super Duo bead on its own and we're going to do our little loop around the top as we did on the other side. So we're going to go through the Super Duo Oh dear, my thread's just caught in the monte, so I'll just unhook it. Three toes and through the super duo. So now you can see how you're going to progress along the opposite side in order to complete the top row and then we'll come back and finish off our fastener on the opposite side. Okay, so I've progressed quite far with getting the opposite side of the bracelet finished off. So we'd gone through how to put the fastening on. So we're now coming out here and I'm getting a little short on thread. And I figured this is a good opportunity to show you also what to do if this happens to you and before we get to finish off the bracelet end. So I've come out of here with my uh, beading needle. I'm actually going to go across the super duo. So this isn't to, to thread any more beads. This is just if you're running out of thread and you want to tie the end off before you're going through. So I'm going to cross to the opposite side and through that super duo. Put on my Monty and I'm going to go back through the next few on this side including the Monty so I've just gone through some more of the beads on that side between the Monty and that seed bead I'm going to take my needle through the thread so I've gone under the fire line that's running through the beads so I'm going under that and you'll see here I've got a loop forming with my fire line this one here so I'm pulling that in so I've got my loop and I'm going to take my beading needle through that loop so I'm inside that loop going out and pulling that tight. So what I've done is created a knot around the thread running through the beads and then I'm going to go back through the Monte Crystal and out and I'm going to repeat that again. So I've got two knots either side of the Monte. So under the thread making my loop with the fire line through the loop with my beading needle and pull that tight through the next seed bead and super duo and the super duo next to that all the way out next to my toho so my threads now come back through these I've got two knots nicely hidden between the Monte and the Toho and um, my thread is coming out here with the needle on it and I'm going to add a new thread so what I'm going to do is take that away be very careful at this stage I'm going to use the precision scissors to cut away the excess thread but you definitely don't want to cut through the one that's running through your beads as you'll have to start your project so nice and close with your precision scissors and trim that excess thread off. Okay. So I'm going to reattach a new thread to be able to finish this end off and not having to worry about running out. 
So I've just taken that end bit off, didn't have much left, and I've cut a new length of my fire line, and we're gonna reattach that. I don't want to start straight away next to there, I'm gonna go through one of my super duos here. I'm pulling my thread through, oops, <laughs> too far through. Pulling my thread through. And I'll do my first knot. So I'm going under the thread between the toe beads. Getting my loop. Through the loop. And I'm going to knot there. I'm going to take this back through some of those seed beads now just so we can hide those knots nicely. Now this was the tail end of the new thread I've just started with my one that's gone through and we've got the knot either side. So I'm going to actually take those two together and tie a straightforward knot with those that's then going to sit next to the seed beads and make that nice and secure. So I've got another knot there. Go back through the super duo. And once more through the bottom. So basically I'm just creating a series of knots and threads to hide those ends and make that as secure as possible. So I'm going to come across And I'm working my way over. I can't get through that one, so we'll have to cut across and go through this side as there's the knot there. So we'll just go over this side and through the Monty. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to leave that thread out the way because we're back to where we need to be. And I'm just going to trim the tail end of that new thread off here. Like I said before, be very careful not to cut through any existing threads that are running through your project. Okay. So I'm running back through my beads until I'm ready to start again adding and finishing off this project. So I'm just taking my needle through. You don't have to rush. Make sure you go through all the beads that you need to. So I've just got the last two to do before we start our fastener. So the same method for these. Almost right at the top of my project here. I've got one last super duo to add on, and then we can move on to doing our fab fastener. That's just my tail end from the original starting place, so we'll just move him out the way. Right, 
perfect so we're gonna take our appetite bead off so you just need to pull on that and it'll come off nice and easily and then we're gonna add five beads to our thread then we're going to pop our appetite bead on there and we're going to take three more of the toe hose now this time with the toe hose you're just going to go through the appetite bead and they're just going to sit above it. Go through the fifth of your seed beads underneath, so just through one of them. And we're going to pull that tight. So that's just going to give you a little top on top of the appetite bead and then we want to add another three because we've already got the one here so I'm just going to pick up three of the toe hose and then through the seed bead and the super duo on this side and we're coming back out the bottom So you can see we've made our little fastener here. I'm going to tighten the end off. So I'm going to go through the next super duo and I'm going to start my knot on this side to finish this thread off. Oh dear. Thread's just caught through around that. Pulled that in as well. Okay. Go under your cord with the beading needle. Create your loop through the loop, pulling that tight, and then back through your beads. Let's pull that tail end out of there. Yep. Gonna do a second knot here on this bit. So I've got my loop and through, across, and up. So I'm confident I've secured that side enough and I'm going to take this away now on this side so this is the one we've got the beading needle on so I've secured the knots on this side so we take away our excess thread there like so and all we need to do to finish the project now is to add the needle onto the starting end and tidy those ends up as well. And we're doing exactly the same. So I'm going to go through the beads and add my series of knots. And this will also secure your fastener. And make this stronger as well.
and I'm pretty happy with the security on that so I'm just going to take away this thread now so by doing that we've got the fastener button and loop which looks like this when it's together and your completed coastal shore bracelet thank you for watching today's tutorial give us a big thumbs up and subscribe now to the youtube channel you can see all of our latest designs if you visit beadsjar.co.uk, you can get all the beads that you've seen in this design. Bye!